Welcome to a special edition of the NWI.com Political Roundtable for Monday, September 30th. I'm Robert Blaskowitz, Assistant Managing Editor of The Times. Joining with me today, Doug Ross, Editorial Page Editor, and our special guest, Megan Robertson uh, from the group Freedom Indiana. Megan, you're a Portage native and, and a uh, longtime Republican uh, um, activist and, uh, and, and campaign worker and, and such. And uh, now you've joined this effort, Freedom Indiana. Can you talk, talk about what Freedom Indiana uh, is trying to do? Sure. Uh, Freedom, Freedom Indiana is a bipartisan uh, organization and, and coalition that's been formed. Uh, we have corporate sponsors, uh, partners in this in this effort to try to stop HJR 6, which is an amendment uh, to Indiana's constitution that would uh, permanently ban gay marriage, but would also uh, severely limit the kinds of uh, legal recognitions for gay and lesbian Hoosiers. And, and would basically uh, any idea of a, any hope of a civil union would be dead. Absolutely. Okay. Um, now, you, you have a kind of an unusual coalition behind this move. You have the people who like the current law but don't want it in the Constitution, and you have the people who don't like the law, period. How do you get these two groups working with each other? Well, I think it's I think it's education and making sure everybody understands exactly what the amendment would do, um, and then and then making sure that uh, that our campaign is focused on one thing and one thing only, which is, uh, you know, we're not we're not necessarily pushing to to legalize gay marriage or that or to actually to change anything. We're actually saying mm-hmm. just leave this out of the constitution. It's unnecessary, and uh, and we feel like the legislature can focus on other things. Okay. What kind of response are you getting from within your own party among Republicans on this issue? I've gotten a lot of support from Republicans across the state. Um, I've had very, very little, uh, you know, negative comments. Most people are excited to see a, a Republican that's willing to stand up and say, "This is where I stand on the issue," and a lot of folks uh, seem to want to stand with me. So it's been very exciting. You know, on the national level, we're right now at the eve of a government shutdown, and you know. So the logical question is, if this goes to a vote in 2014, how does that affect the congressional elections? I think it'll be interesting to see how it would impact the congressional elections. Um, obviously, you know, the districts are, are drawn in, in a way that, uh, you know, typically are going to be helpful for the folks that are in office right now. We just saw the first election with those maps. But at the same time, it's going, you know, if this is, a, if this is on the ballot, it's going to bring out a lot of voters that typically don't show up in, in off-year elections. So um, you're taking an election that you, you know, you know what the ele- electorate's going to look like, typically older, typically more conservative, and giving, uh, giving you know, younger voters who might not be as interested in a congressional election a reason to come out and vote. Um, folks that usually only vote in presidential elections are going to show up in droves voting, for, voting uh, against this amendment. This effort also includes uh, prominent members of the Indiana business community, including Cummins and Eli Lilly companies uh, that are looking to recruit workers throughout the country and think that this effort would, be, that putting this on the ballot would, would hurt that effort to recruit workers. Can you talk about that? Absolutely. It, it would impact their ability ability to recruit the best and the brightest to our Indiana companies. Um, you know, in this day and age now with technology, you can do a lot of jobs from any place. And people are not so much moving to jobs, but really moving to places they would like to live and finding a job there. Uh, so we want to make sure that Indiana is a place where the best and the brightest want to come and live and you know raise their families and stay in our communities. This amendment doesn't do that. You know, you, you spoke as, you know, your, your Republican principles being limited government and so forth. Um, you know, I've heard a lot of people saying, well, you know, the Republicans want small government small enough to slip under your bedroom door and uh, uh, legislate social uh, issues that, that, you know, might be incredibly personal, this being one of them. How do you respond to people who say that? Well, I, I mean, I think they're right. Um, in some ways, if, if, if our party is not about that, then we should probably start um, stop we should start focusing on other issues and stop focusing on on these kinds of issues that are deeply personal and frankly I think infringe on people's uh, individual rights and, and liberties which is exactly what this campaign is about that's why it's called Freedom Indiana uh, this is about individual rights and making sure that uh, the government doesn't infringe on them mm-hmm. what about and, and you your group has done polling that shows uh, for the most part uh, Hoosiers are are opposed to changing the Constitution absolutely um, 
but what about the argument that um, why not then just put it up to a vote and let, let the voters decide once and for all? I mean, I, personally, I think if it did go to a referendum, we would end up defeating this amendment. 64% of Hoosiers think a constitutional amendment is not the way to deal with this issue, which I think is reason enough for it not to go to, to the ballot. But at the end of the day, it's a very divisive issue, um, and it's, it's, a, it's a conversation that can very quickly become very negative. And that's not something that we should probably do to our state um, when most Hoosiers don't think this should be a constitutional amendment. And in fact, over 70% of Hoosiers think there should be some legal recognition uh, for, for gay and lesbian couples. Of course, any federal uh, court ruling would affect uh, this issue. How soon do you think that's going to happen? And what, how do you think it's going to go? I mean, I don't, I, I don't think I could predict or anybody can really predict what's going to happen in the federal courts or how soon they're going to act on things. Um, we've, saw, we've seen people try to do that in the, over the last several months, and nobody really had a great handle on how it was going to go. Um, but I think it's very clear that you know, public opinion on this issue is shifting very dramatically and very quickly. Um, and I think that the courts will catch up with that shift in public opinion. And the shift in public opinion is, I think, primarily driven by the younger Americans, uh, younger Hoosiers in this case. So why do you think their attitudes are shifting so fast? Well, I think actually younger Hoosiers, in my opinion, I think younger Hoosiers have kind of already been here, um, but they're talking to people about it. And also, um, you know, one of the numbers that, uh, that we noticed in our polling information is that a large number of Hoosiers, I think it was something some, something in the mid-60s, know someone who is gay. And um, that's something that definitely impacts people's opinion on this issue. When you understand that it impacts your neighbor, that you might not have had any idea about 10 years ago that they were gay. Um, now you understand how it impacts them and their family or a co-worker. Um, mm -hmm. It makes it very personal for people. Uh, you don't have to be gay to care about this issue. What can people who want to get involved and, and support your cause, what can they do to uh, to do that? Well, first off is go to freedomindiana.org. That's our website. You can sign up to uh, join our cause and be a part of our, uh, of our petition process and contacting your legislators. Um, in my experience, legislators really do want to represent their constituents, uh, but they can only represent you accurately if you're reaching out and letting them know what you think. So uh, the best thing you can do is, is to contact your legislators, and if you go to our website, there's all kinds of instructions on how to do it. Okay. Well, okay. Thank you for joining us, Megan, and thank you for watching this edition of the NWI.com Political Roundtable.